Right. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, we thought that with the holidays approaching that um, it would be really nice to just have a discussion um, over consumerism as a whole, but especially how the holiday season really plays into um, the consumerism mentality. And then also discuss maybe some ways that we can step back from that a bit um, and really bring in a bit more intention with you know, what we want to feel for the holiday season, the tr traditions that we do feel like we, you know, bring us joy and, um, you know, maybe inspire you all to maybe think through um, how, how your holiday season is. And um, yeah, so with that, I'm excited to have this discussion um, overall. And um, I guess I'll just kick it off in that for me, the holiday season always brings a bit of stress. I just automatically start feeling it. Um, my parents are divorced. And so growing up, there were all, there was always the pool of the different families and, um, and, you know, it's not that, you know, we, my, I think my parents, you know, did the, always do the best that they can with what they, um, what they have. But I think that we were kind of over showered with gifts and presents kind of as a lack or as a making up for maybe a little bit of the guilt that they felt there. And um, I just know that uh, with having a daughter now that I just want it to be different. And so with her being so young, I really am like reevaluating what it is that I want to bring forth for our own small family, um, what traditions we want and how, you know, I can uh, feel a little bit less stress and also knowing that it's my choice, <laughs> right. And how mm -hmm. I, how I feel, um, over the holidays. So I am very, uh, I do recognize very much that, um, a lot of this is like past conditioning almost. It's like, Oh, the holidays are here. Like, this is how <laughs> I feel is stress. So I am, more aware of that. And, um, but now it's just kind of like taking that to the next level and really making the holidays feel special. So what? Yeah. I, I, I love that our children are bringing amazing opportunities for us to reevaluate our lives and how we truly, truly want to do things now that we are the parents, right. And that mm -hmm. breaking that karmic chain of we do it because that's how my mom or my dad or my family that raised me used to do it. I'm that said, I am a big fan of questioning traditions. I don't believe traditions should be followed just because there are traditions, right? For me personally, for a long time, I seized any celebration um, because I felt that I don't know the meaning. I don't know why I'm celebrating it and why I'm supposed to if I'm really not connected to the actual essence of it. So for the longest time, I just didn't celebrate any of the holidays that I grew up with. And, and then I said, you know, I just sat still and I attracted many different spiritualities into my life. And eventually I found the, the reason that resonated with me the most. And I just tossed the BS and kept the real deal. And now we pick and choose what traditions we want to keep and why we're celebrating it. And when my kids ask me why we're celebrating X, Y, and Z, I actually have an answer for them. And the quote that uh, Gustav Mahler uh, came up with, he said, tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. To me, I always think if that's indeed the case, then a fire that is built on expensive stuff, all the while providing milk and cookies to a super overweight bearded dude that squeezes himself into the chimney is, for me, it is not enough fire to keep any tradition alive. It's not enough. Like, I can't even bring myself to say to my kids, hey, Santa brought you this. It's, it's hard. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. It's hard. It's hard for me. I didn't grow up on that tradition, but I will respect the tradition even more if someone can come up and say, why are we celebrating it? So I, I, 
to having reverence uh, to to for people in our lives does not need to translate into buying stuff for them, right? Does not need to translate to me giving in to capitalism and consumerism and buying more stuff. And the, the for me, it's, it's not, it doesn't create homeostasis within the culture or the society. I understand that there is an oxytocin and dopamine surge that we are getting from the joy of actually buying something that is synthetic. But with all due respect, I'm not interested in another made in China. I'm not interested in another toy that I buy for my child that after they get a new toy, they no longer play with it. I mean, just ask yourself, like, how how long after you buy a toy does your child play with it? I can say for from my own experience, not long versus how long after you travel together as a family or providing your children with experiences, does your child remember it? For me, I can say a very, very long time. So that's going to be our focus this holiday season. I love that. I, your, well, that quote first, the, the tradition, you know, that, um, I, I totally agree with that and that like, why, like it, it, it's great to have traditions. It's great to have things that are meaningful to you, but if you're not getting meaning out of it, or especially if it's causing you even more stress <laughs> to do mm -hmm. the thing it is, it's like step back and, um, and you know, what, what, what purpose is this serving? Right. Um, I think, yeah, I, I'll, I, I love your perspective on you know, the whole Santa and the, cookies and stuff because I mean, for you on. it was like you, you didn't grow up with it so no. yeah so I feel like you have like such a in a way an outside perspective like what is this you know yeah. where I grew up with it and but looking now it's like and, and and I mean for a while it's been like I this is just so much this is mm -hmm. like like what like what what exactly are we celebrating like mm -hmm. in a lot of ways it does seem like we're when you look at kind of that aspect of it just the whole Santa and like let's get all the toys that we can it almost seems like a celebration of consumerism mm -hmm. <laughs> um where it's like, okay, that's, is that the spirit of what, what it is? And, and, and what you said exactly with the, like, does, do we need to show our appreciation for someone by giving them something or our love by, by giving them a physical gift? There's so many ways to show love other than that. And, um, you know, I mean, to me, like sharing a meal and mm -hmm. just spending time with someone is, you know, huge. And, and even for me, like looking back, sure. I do remember like being, you know, coming down and all these presents are by the tree, but like what really sticks with me is like the times when I did get to go, you know, to a family members and spend there the whole day. Like we did Christmas Eve at my aunt's and then, um, Christmas day, I was at my mom's family, but like those, you know, those, those are, are what stick with you. It's the, it's the um, experience mm -hmm. and the memories, not the, not the toys that you played with for, for five or 10 minutes. So, um, but, and I mean, and for me though, it's like with having my mm -hmm. little girl, like I know she's a part of this culture <laughs> and, this, right. and that, you know, she has cousins and friends and they're all getting toys and stuff. So it's like, I, 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 it's finding that balance there because of course, like, you know, she's going to be confronted with, with it. And, um, I don't want to say confronted. That sounds very like, uh, hostile, but, but that, that, that that's going to be a part of her. So I think, um, you know, with she's start, she, she'll be three. So she's starting to understand the concept and stuff. And I just, with whatever gifts we decide to do, I want to be intentional with them. Um, but then also like find those experiences that we can do. Um, and I do love the idea of like, maybe even do you like, cause I, I love like, doing a gift like your gift is we're going to go on this trip this summer mm -hmm. or you know something like like that, that that this is what we're doing like 
I don't know. So what, where do you, so where kind of are, have you fallen with like the, with your tradition, with your kids, you know, playing into the whole Christmas and Santa and all of that versus like, let's step back a little bit. So from not growing up with the tradition of Santa, but rather yeah. marrying into one has brought a lot of thoughts and questions, lots of questions and identity issues of what the heck are we doing here? Not to spit on traditions. I question my own traditions growing up with it. You know, Yom Kippur is supposed to be a day of fasting. For so long, I did not fast. For so long, I was eating ham because I didn't get the answers that I want. So for me, I think the dilemma of to give or not to give or what to give is a legit dilemma and if to give. But I believe that if we, if we truly feel that we have everything that we need and going back to the tenant of I am abundance, I am abundant with family and health and love and prosperity, et cetera, et cetera, then why do we need to accumulate more stuff that might be free? Because someone else bought it for me, it's free. Even if it's free, it's taking space in your sacred place. So there is, and there's so much value in our space. Why do I want to clutter it? Especially for something that I'll probably donate the following month, right? So I always vote for an experience of some sort. It can be music lessons. It can be, let's make art at the local art studio rather than, you know, another made in China that takes more space in the in my kid's bedroom, they already, you already like walk on it and you see that there's no space in the closet. And that's something that I bring about all the time. It's like, guys, do you, do you feel that you have enough toys? That's a conversation I have them on a daily basis. Do you feel that you have enough toys? Cause I had one doll growing up. Yeah. And there's like, mm, well, we can always donate and then buy new stuff because I taught them if you're gonna buy something, you're gonna give something. Yeah. That's the yeah. idea, but it doesn't mm -hmm. completely solve my personal issue, but it's probably my, I can't, I can't force my viewpoint on kids that were raised in America. So they're half and half, right? They're exactly, mm -hmm. you know, in the middle. And then I came across a quote by uh, Lemony Snicket, I think his name is. And he said, just because something is traditional is no reason to do it, of course. Right. So that, then I started questioning, how did we go from celebrating the birth anniversary of Jesus of Nazareth, even though the Bible doesn't mention that it's his birth, uh, which who was an amazing spiritual leader to an overweight Santa? Like what? How, how did we go from here to there? So I dug deeper as clinical nutritionists do. Mm -hmm. And according to the History Channel, they said that church leaders thought they will increase the chances of celebrating Christmas and it would be more popular uh, if they're going to put a Santa in it, right? If, 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 if something else will be brought to the attention of the masses, but still, what does Santa have to do with Jesus? So they said that Santa Claus is a legend uh, based mostly on the life of St. Nicholas. I heard right. about him, a mm -hmm. real life historical follower of Jesus Christ and a man that gave generously. I already love that. Already love that. Love, love, yeah. love, love. Right. And the, then the Bible commands to love your neighbor. Yes, absolutely. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself, love your neighbor more than yourself. Yes. I'm all about it to be, that's the essence of life. But at the same token, the marketing push for you to realize what you don't have, what you might want, what you might want to look like is, 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 is an illusion, right? What Santa is gonna bring you, basically what's, what we're gonna break the bank in order to make you feel worthy or make you feel loved is a no-no, that's, that's not okay. I, I'm, I think capitalism is a, can be great, but as a parent, I think it needs to be a conscious capitalism and a, through a very objective lens of, hey, they may do it like this. How about we do it differently? How about this year? And so we decided that this year, yes, they're going to get presents from my husband's side of the family. I, I tried to control it for years. It didn't work. But they're going to give one gift that they're going to give, that they're going to get 
they're going to gift it to a child that doesn't have it. And I keep saying there are children that don't have anything to eat. There are children that don't have anything to play with. So they play with rocks and this and that. It's like, okay, okay, mommy. So we're going to gift one gift that we're going to get. So that's how we solve the gifting problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I love, yeah. I think that's, that's great. I mean, because it it is, it's that recognition of like, you know, it's, you can't, it's not con, con, in your control with everything. Of, I mean, and some things are just not worth stressing, but you make it work for you. Um, and the whole like, okay, we, we're going to get presents, but we're going to give as well um, is so important. And that's what, as my daughter gets older, I want to bring that in. And w- my husband and I were just talking about that the other day, like, let's mm-hmm. find something this year. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same thing, but maybe it will be, you know, where this is what we do, um, the holiday season, uh, you know, in, in addition to the, the presents that we'll be getting, uh, here's what we, we give. And, and the other piece of that too, to remember is like with giving and receiving, it's like, I also want to teach her how to receive a gift. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, I think that it's like recognizing the love behind that and the, you know, not just like, Oh, thanks. Where's my next one? Like, it's, it's really like, you know, someone took the time to, to pick this out for you and that they thought you like that. So it's like fully receive that. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I think there's so many elements to that. And then as far as the, I, I think it's so, I, I love like, cause again, like with you not growing up in the United States and, you know, you had one doll growing up and with all of my travels, that's one thing that has been really clear to me, even in Europe, like nothing tops American consumerism. And like, yeah. even though Europe is very, you know, Westernized and it, it's just so embedded in our culture that we, we need the stuff. And, you know, I, my personal experience with that is that I can fully admit that probably, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, I needed the stuff to identify myself. Mm -hmm. Like I needed to make sure I was wearing the nice clothes and driving a nice car. And, and it, it, I mean, and I, as little as I, I really didn't have like a whole lot of awareness back then, but I do actually remember having a moment where I was like, I, I wouldn't be happy without the, if it was all stripped away, I wouldn't even know who I was because I was so defined by what I had. And, um, I think that this story or this situation plays so well. And I mean, it was such a marked point in my journey towards really my relationship with stuff. So, um, you know, thought I'd share it, but I took a trip to Ecuador with my mom. Um, this was, I think in 2014 and I had already, I actually was in a yoga, yoga teacher training at that point. So I was very open and, and kind of a little bit more aware of like, okay, Mm -hmm. like there's, I I have some growth to do and and Mm -hmm. I want to, as we always do. Um, but definitely on that path. And, um, we, when, while we were in Ecuador, we stayed for a few days at a resort in the Amazon rainforest. And through this resort, we were able to go and spend time with an indigenous family who, you know, lived like they had had for thousands of years, just off of the land and, you know, had just kind of a a hut that we were in that was like up in the trees. And it was incredible. And I just loved just, I I was just so fascinated by that. They, they didn't have anything, but they had so much Mm. because they had everything they needed at their fingertips. And, um, so we, we left there and, and our, the the guide from the resort, I was, you know, he was kind of talking a little bit more about the family and said that, and this is kind of the part where I was like, so like, not really sure how to feel, but the resort was paying them, you know, obvi- to, to open up their home, which is fair enough as they should in some ways, but they were saving up to buy a TV with the money that they made mm-hmm. from the resort. And it just broke my heart because, <laughs> uh, and you know, I, I didn't, there were so many questions there too. Cause I was like, wait, they don't even have electricity. How is this? But, but it was like the fact that I was like, they're, 
they have everything they need. And it's like, that's their first step into this like Western consumerism. And, you know, it's, it, it was just, I, it, it was just a very marked point for me and just, you know, I, I don't know, like, and I don't, I even wonder, I'm like, was that even authentic? Had, did they have somewhere else to live? And it was like all a resort thing, but it felt very mm-hmm. authentic to me. And like, regardless, I learned so much and it just, completely reevaluated my relationship with my stuff. And I did this huge clean out and Mm -hmm. like was all into like capsule wardrobe because that was my weakness with like (laughs) clothes and it still is. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, but that, you know, I, it's, it's, I always think about that and it just completely, it was just a moment that completely changed me. But I, you know, I definitely think growing up in this American culture, like it, it's just revolves around Mm -hmm. the stuff that you, you buy. And, you know, and that's, it is what it is, but yet we have an opportunity, I think, to bring a little bit more intentionality around it. And I think that's like the important important piece of it so absolutely yeah I love that you had an opportunity to tap into a different culture and bring back your resolutions from it into your life I mean I I I loved I came here because the possibilities are endless came here decades ago because the possibilities are endless I love everything that it stands for hand in hand I believe that we bring when we bring in a different consciousness that capitalism backed conscious consumer consumerism can be shifted towards things that we really want more of in our lives i am a true believer in voting with my money i really try to make sure that most of the things that i buy are things that i want to see more of in our lives that's why i do not go to fast food restaurants I don't, I, I, I don't want to contribute to what I believe is a great contributor to obesity and chronic illness. That's a huge reason why I don't. I don't buy cheap processed foods. I buy other not so cheap vegan processed food. I call it, you know, junk vegan for our kids, but I don't buy the Doritos or the Lay's or whatever else is there or the gummies because I don't want them to make more of that. I don't want to be a supporter of especially when it comes to nutrition of our kids so i i was able to look into clutter because sometimes i think we can all relate that we feel like there's clutter there's a physical clutter and the research that has been done over the years says that the physical clutter sometimes and most likely also leads to mental clutter and that mental clutter can lead to things being more difficult especially when you have to deal with it on a daily basis. It, you know, it can make it hard to focus on one thing, uh, one thing at a time, because the brain is so stretched in all these directions. And I see it with our kids. When they have too many toys, they're like, they don't know what to start with. So, so we started storing a lot of the toys in the garage. That's like a, a little tip that I got from my friend, Aaron. It's like, just store things in the garage. And after a while, bring them in. They're going to feel like it's new and it's, it's working like a charm. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's a huge, sometimes for people that are overwhelmed with the clutter, it's easier for them to just keep things the same because it's mentally exhausting and physically exhausting to start getting rid of things that no longer serve you. Hand in hand, the clutter can affect the anxiety levels, the sleep, the ability to focus. It can make us feel and act less productively. It triggers the, the coping and avoidance strategies that are you know, that probably as a nutritionist probably make us emotional eating more, watching, binging on TV shows with, you know, food that doesn't serve us. So all to say that, yes, clutter is an overabundance of possessions that collectively create chaotic and disorderly living spaces. But it takes a lot of willingness and desire to shift to a state of minimalism, like we talked about before, less is more, or just to know that what you have right now in your life is sufficient to what you really need. And then when you are getting something that you want, it's because you truly wanted it, you truly desired it, and not just, you know, 
buying so much stuff to really avoid feeling a certain things. People are talking about the holiday blues. What is the holiday blues? So some say, okay, there's less vitamin D, there's less sunshine. So people are going into semi-depression state. And so you ask yourself, okay, am I buying now because I want to feel better? And you see in, in Starbucks and all these coffee shops, there's more sugary drinks. What is this supposed to serve us? What, so I'm feeling bad. So let me get a sugar drink. So I'll have a sugar rush. My insulin level will rise, but then it's a fake sugar. So it's going to collapse just as fast. And you know what? I'm going to go back to feeling really depressed. So why don't we save that trip around the sun and, and deal with what I'm feeling? Okay, I'm feeling sad. Why am I feeling sad? Because I miss my family. All right, allow it to settle in. Thank it for being there for you, right? Thank, thank that feeling for being aware of what it is that you might be needing. And make room for something happy. Count your blessing. You know, look at your children. Look at your, pick up the phone. Call your mom, your dad, whoever, family member, friends that make you feel happier, right? Instead of bringing in stuff that really do not serve us on a nutritional level, mental level, and physical level. Yeah, absolutely. Now that it's so true, the tie between the physical clutter and the mental clutter, and really all of you know, the, whether it be the, the drink at Starbucks that, that we're consuming or, you know, the, the stuff we're going on a shopping spree, it's all there to kind of distract us mm -hmm. and avoid certain feelings. And I don't want to say, and, and again, I'm not saying that every single time you go and shop or that you're going to Starbucks that you no. are doing that. Yeah. yeah. However, it, it's a fair question to ask yourself of why am I doing this? What, right. is there something that I'm avoiding here? Is there a feeling that I need to just feel? And it's, we, we don't, um, it's all space, right? That mm -hmm. we're, it's like, it's physically taking up space in our physical environment. And then mentally just the we, we, we don't really like silence. A lot of times it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. to sit with ourselves in silence as well. It's like that space can be really scary. Yes. Uh, and so it's like, let's just fill it. Let's just fill it. Right. And however, when you start to bring that intention in and sit there and like, okay, what, what is the feeling I'm having now? And allow the feeling to come, allow yourself to feel it. Mm -hmm then you've processed it and you can be. And I think that that is like one thing that I have, if, if there's anything that I've learned on this whole journey and path, it's that space and that stillness is so important. So translating that into physical is so important. It's like, if, if, if all of your closets are filled with, <laughs> you know, just filled with stuff. Like I, you don't have any, I mean, it's just, you don't even know what you have. It's hard to appreciate what you have. Cause it's like, things are falling out everywhere. And, and with the toys too, I think that's a brilliant idea. I've, I've been doing the same with them, just rotating her shelves out mm -hmm. a little bit with like different toys. And, and it is, it's like new toys every time <laughs> that you rotate those out. And it's right. And it's so, you know, they only need like to see six or seven toys at a time. I mean, depending on their age, but mm -hmm. she's at, she's at the age where I'll, I'll keep a lot in the box, like, and even books and stuff. And then I'll get those books. And all of a sudden she's captured by, you know, this new, these new books that have just been rotated in and out. So I think that's like such a wonderful idea. Like it's a toy rotation. And I know with Montessori too, that's a big piece I, I would love she, she doesn't go to a Montessori preschool but I do love that way of learning but it, it is very mm -hmm. much like um you know the kids don't learn and in, in chaos <laughs> they, mm -hmm. they, they need kind of the the structure of just and and the minimalism that that brings so yeah yeah so. We, we we I clean through their closets frequently and I sit down with them hey do you use it do you want it do you like it no, no, no. Okay. If, and if you haven't worn it in the last two years, obviously, A, it doesn't fit you. B, it doesn't need to take space in your closet. So we make big bag for donation. And recently I did it with our son and he holds on to stuff 
he's just so sensitive, like completely the opposite of who I am. It's very much my husband. So just so sensitive, like he keeps this note from, I don't know, kindergarten that this girl wrote for him. It's like, honey, you let's let's choose one let's leave one you don't need a whole box of notes from your kindergarten like <laughs> let's leave one thing he's like no but it's like you're playing with other things you're still going with her now that you're in elementary school like let's leave one so he agreed to do that and we just I, I brought a big garbage bag one for you know the trash and one for a donation and he said to me you know what mommy I feel so good it feels so good to clean it up because I really didn't use it and same thing with our girls, right? It's like, what don't you use? We're going to give it to the child. You know what? This child doesn't have a lot of clothes. Would you like to give it? Or I'll give it to my cleaning lady who has, you know, grandchildren and children. And that, and I just recently got rid of a bunch of my clothes that served me during my pregnancy. And I looked and I was like, what am I holding on for? Mm-hmm. I don't wear that size. You know, I, I don't need it. It served me. I actually talked to the clothes from it. And it's like, thank you for being there for me when I really wanted to feel pretty and sexy, you know, but it's time to go. And so I felt so good that it went to someone that I know. And so when I presented the clothes to her, I almost had teary eyes. I was like, wow, that, you know, they served me throughout, you know, being pregnant with all our kids, but it felt really, really, really good. And that mental ease to letting go creates the sense of internal empowerment. You're, you're connected to what and who you are, which is a true strength, right? That seed of, I am abundance because you have everything that you need. There's no scarcity. It's, you know, scarcity can be a a frightening, illusionary thought. There is abundance, come out from abundance. So Yeah. yeah, it was a good experience. So true the, yeah, the abundance mindset, because really hoarding is a mm-hmm. scarcity mentality. Yes. It's, you know, there's not enough. I, I need more and more. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, that's when you look at nature, like that's how it is, right? It's like the giving and the receiving and like the, the times of, um, you know, slowing down and then speeding mm-hmm. up, and like even that with how it relates into the winter season. And that was another thing I was thinking too, is just how really the winter should be about like the slowing down mm-hmm. and really being more intentional. Um, but yet we celebrate this holiday where it's like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> let's rush to the how cashier. Can we get you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go out, do your shopping and make sure you're yeah. You know, and like, yeah, it, it, I mean, it, and it's, it's in, like, it starts so early. It starts earlier and earlier every year, like this, this frantic idea, yes. like yes. you got to go out and just, just go and go and go. And yeah. it's like, we took ourselves out of the equation of mother nature. How can we ever take ourselves from that? We are part of the ec- ecosystem, right? Yeah. And it's a matter of energy. People always talk about money. They're so afraid the money's going to ra- run out. Money is energy. Yeah. You give, you get, you receive. Just keep that circle. Keep that flow going. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not, l- nature is never in stillness. It's always that's flowing right. and going. Yeah. It's not stagnant. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, so true. Yeah. The, the giving and the receiving and all of it. Yeah. So I know that, you know, people always ask me about Hanukkah because while, yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So tell me like, actually, cause you grew up in Israel mm-hmm. and I, I didn't have many Jewish friends. I didn't have any close Jewish friends, but from what I know, like you get toys every, every night of Hanukkah. There's a present. I wish. I wish. <laughs> is it not like that in Israel? <laughs> it was so funny because, you know, we talked about it when we prepped for this podcast and it, it is 100% American thing, yeah. 100%. So in Israel, we don't get toys every, every uh, night. That will be a lot. Uh, not that I don't wish that we have gotten toys earlier, you know, when I was younger, but no, we don't. Yeah. We just celebrated with 
with lighting the candles, the, some people call it the menorah. It's actually not a menorah, it's a Hanukkiya. So we, lighting, we light each candle every night. We do have chocolate coins, not even real coins, it's chocolate coins. Yeah. And, and uh, we play with, um, with svivonim, with dreidels. And there's a whole story why we do that. But the, the reason why Jewish families in America do give toys and presents for their kids is because they had to keep up yeah. with their neighbors that did celebrate Christmas. And so yeah. they adopted that gift for each night tradition because Christmas is around the same time as Hanukkah. So we right. we believe that during Hanukkah is a it's a fantastic opportunity to be that shining light to your neighbor. And that's why when we light each candle on Hanukkah Eve, we actually take from the light of the candle we just lit and pass it to the next candle because we believe we are vessels. We are, we are channels for that light. So my husband took the kids to the mall and he's like, okay. And he didn't want he didn't want Hanukkah to feel neglected. So he said to our kids, Hey, let's pick out Hanukkah presents. So they came back home and he knows me. I mean, he married a, an Israeli, so he knows I'm very opinionated. So he came back home and he said, and the, and then the kids say, we have our Hanukkah presents. I said, Hanukkah, what Hanukkah presents? We don't give presents on Hanukkah. And my husband took me to the side. He's like, Psst, we, I needed something. I needed something to kind of make them feel happy about Hanukkah. I was like, no, 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 no. They're going to feel <laughs> quite happy about Hanukkah without the freaking presents. Thank you very much. So I set them down. I said, listen, we do not get presents in Hanukkah, but you know what? You already started the tradition of the stuff for Christmas. So you can get those, the stuff for Christmas. So let Christmas be the Christmas <laughs> yeah, that my husband have, yeah. grew up on. You can have your Christmas, but I'm going to instill some culture so, and some yes. spirituality. Don't take away my Hanukkah. Don't, you know, don't dirty <laughs> off my Hanukkah. Well, and that, like, oh, the lighting of the candles, that is the most beautiful. I, yeah, like, uh, I mean, I, I think about that all the time of just light, you know, being the light in the darkness and how much yes. like one light can shine to make it, you know, that much brighter. And then when Absolutely. you add and add and like, that is so beautiful. And so, yeah, it's just, it's like, why should it like that is the message that, that is yeah. what it should be yeah <laughs> we get presents no, for Hanukkah no yeah. you did not you did, you got yeah. maybe chocolate, so funny, chocolate yeah oh, there you go that's yeah it's fine really oh high God. quality ch chocolate none of the fake stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I got to share that so is it still like that in Israel or has like the American culture kind of like sneaked in there at all I feel like it has its way against it into other countries yeah. <laughs> there's yeah there's McDonald's in Russia anything can happen um yeah. no, well no they don't they don't get presents every night but they can get something like them you know but it's, yeah, a, it's a big celebration. So we invite people over and actually, you know, one of our kids does remember last year how we invited everyone. We gave them dreidels, vivonim, they played, they had games, you know, the whole table was covered with, you know, glitter, just a whole coming and together that, exactly yeah, what you that, wanted as a little so girl. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's amazing. And that's like the thing with the crit, with Christmas, like, and I've even thought about that, like a lot of people do the advent calendars, which we never did growing up. And to be honest, I, I, I mean, I'm, wasn't ever super religious. I know, I know that there's a meaning behind the whole advent, but, um, but what I have thought about doing, it's just a lot of days, but, um, of like an experience every single mm -hmm. day, like love it. It's baking cookies or watching a Christmas movie. I love it. Um, you know, so, so. I, I do want to bring in a little bit of that because there are like, it's like you, it, it's, it is a, a joyous time. Like, and, and so it's wonderful to celebrate that, but um, yeah. Yeah. The, the and and those that keep the traditions, like my mother-in-law, for example, we had a little battle going on there because when I first entered the family, um, it was, yes, we do Christmas, a big ad, you know, big Christmas tree and we yeah. buy expensive gifts. Like she didn't need to say all of that. I saw it. 
Like the yeah. gifts were ridiculous. I was like, ah, uh, uh, can we just go and donate our time to someone? And I, I offered it. I said, hey, can we all just go somewhere? Can we donate our time? Can we make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to the homeless people? Let's let's just give a little bit of that, you know? Mm-hmm. But I noticed it didn't, it didn't, uh, it wasn't accepted at all, yeah. my suggestion. Um, but I realized that she didn't want me to take away her experience of Christmas. Yeah. So what you're saying about baking cookies, she loves baking cookies. She loves doing that. And so, but we had to shift how things are done because my kids don't eat the gluten and the sugar. They actually have very sensitive stomach. And so they spent their days in diarrhea and vomiting one Christmas because it was sugar cookies that she grew up on. So we had to find a happy medium. I had to to, you know, how do you say, I had to let go of the gas pedal a little bit, you know, and she had to be accommodated a little bit by my two cents. So we, we found a happy medium and we do celebrate Christmas when they are in town. We -hmm. don't celebrate Christmas when they're not, I don't put the tree up when they're not, but Uh, we do celebrate it when they are in town out of, you know, respect and wanting to be together as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful that, you know, it's like finding that compromise and recognizing that she is, you know, it brings her joy in yes, all of the yes. activities of Christmas. So yes. in a sense, that's, you know, you giving to her that yes. opportunity mm-hmm. to have that experience. So and yeah. that's, yeah, that's what, you know, whenever we're like com- combining families and in-laws, I feel like you always mm-hmm. have pieces of that. It's like, okay. This is yeah. what we do. Well, this is what we do. Yeah. And <laughs> how, there's a name for it. I forgot. Is it Chris, Chris, Chris Hanukkah? There's a name when Jewish families. Oh, I don't, like I don't combine Christmas. Combine. So there's actually a name for it. Chris Hanukkah. Chris Yeah. Something like that. I, yeah. I feel like. Again, I've it's an American it. thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I think, I think we, we all have to be in the process of reevaluating the value in our lives, right? I had to reevaluate my super opinionated self and meet my husband's family where they are, right? And I have to meet my kids' expectations being brought up in the United States and let go of some of my personal expectations of how I would like things to be done. But at the same time, I need to, I need them to recognize the idea of abundance, not through stuff that are being purchased at, you know, Target, JCPenney or whatnot, but at, 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 but more about breaking bread together, being together as a family. And that would far exceed the consumerism experience that all the TV networks and media channels are feeding us with, you know? And so I, I believe that aligning ourselves with objectivism and stop taking nature's template out of the equation is the way to keep our our emotional and mental sanity while going through the holiday season yeah absolutely and it's that intention Mm -hmm. and energy that is behind everything that you do do whether it is you know giving into it a little bit of the the consumerism, but that energy is still behind there. And like, I think so much of what we talk about, it's like, that is the part that's going to play it through that, that energy is going to be what is picked up and received. So regardless of what their traditions are, it's that intentionality and, um, and consciousness around the holidays that I love that yeah will really be what what it's meant to be for your as what as how you want to celebrate with your family yeah and and feel with your family yeah Yeah. beautifully said Brooke yes excellent yeah well I yeah I think that we've I you know I think like like we said I love wrapping up with the energy and um yeah, I, I hope that for our listeners, you know, you've been able to kind of be inspired or maybe take something from this and just bring a little bit more intentionality and consciousness into your holiday season. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>
Bye, everyone. <laughs>